All right, Assassin's Creed cosplay unlocked. All you need is a hoodie, a bedsheet, and two spoons taped to your wrist. Hello everyone, welcome back to Two Sweet MTG, welcome to another Command the Deck Tech. In today's video, we are diving headfirst into the haystack that is Assassin's Creed Universes Beyond. Today, we're looking at Ezio Auditore de Firenze. It is one in the black for a 3-2 legendary creature, Human Assassin with Menace. It has, Assassin spells you cast have free running black black, which means you may cast a spell for its free running cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with an assassin or a commander. It then also has, whenever Ezio deals combat damage to a player, you may pay a Wooburg if that player has 10 or less life. When you do, that player loses the game. So, how are we going to build Ezio here? Well, to put it bluntly, this is going to be the most assassiny deck to ever sheath up a hidden blade, so do look out for assassins in every section of the video. As Ezio is a 5 card commander thanks to that activated ability, it means that we can run every assassin that we want, which is truly awesome. The top ability of Ezio, however, means importantly we don't have to pay 5 colours to cast those creatures. We only need to pay black black. This makes the mana requirements of this deck so much better and means we can put it together on much more of a reasonable budget. All we have to do is have ways of making our assassins unblockable and then have a bunch of black mana available to us, because then we can just cast them for their free running cost. That will basically mean that this is sort of a mono black deck that's splashing the other four colours. The fact that Ezio is also only two mana to cast will mean that we can easily have access to it whenever we need it. In terms of actually building the deck and putting it together, I would have most of the standard effects of the deck, like things like card draw, ramp, interaction and protection, on black or colourless effects. This will just make actually playing a game of magic with this deck so much easier and so much more affordable. When it comes to splashing the other colours, I would save these for our cool assassins or our win conditions. A quick note on how this video will work. In these videos, we break down the deck into manageable sections. We tell you what each section does and how many cards in each section you need to run to make the deck work. We'll give you a bunch of options so you can choose the ones that work best for you and your budget. And of course, any card we mentioned will be down in the description below. While you're there, please consider following the channel and giving the video a like. Our first section I'm calling Evasion, and basically this is either assassins with built-in evasion that can deal combat damage to a player, or our effects that can give our team of creatures evasion, so we can swing through with an assassin to give the rest of our assassins free running with Ezio. First up we have some assassins that have evasion themselves. These are the perfect bread and butter of the deck. Cards like Assassin Initiate, Changeling Outcast, Brotherhood Spy, Hookblade Veteran, Avon Heartstabber, Xiao Yun, Midnight Assassin and Etrata the Silencer. These are all fantastic assassins that we can play nice and early. Then with Ezio on the board they can swing through for combat damage, opening the gate for the rest of our assassins to free run through onto the battlefield. We then have other ways to make the rest of our assassins unblockable. We have the very thematic in this deck, Cover of Darkness, which for just 2 mana will let all of our assassins pass through unseen against any player not running black. Absolutely perfect in the deck. We then have the ever trusty Trailblazer's Boots and Whisper Silk Cloak. Perfect for sticking on an assassin so we can get through for the damage that we need to cast our creatures with free running with Ezio. And then we're spoiling our utility land section a little bit here by going through some lands that make a creature unblockable. They're just going to be really solid and exactly what we need. There's a bunch of really solid options here. You can look at running cards like Access Tunnel, Escape Tunnel, Rogue's Passage, Shizo Death Storehouse and The Black Gate. They're all fantastic in the deck so I'd definitely consider running them. Moving on now, in a 5 colour deck, getting the right colours of mana is just as important as getting more mana in play. That's why in this deck we've combined our ramp and our fixing into one large category. First up we have some mana rocks like Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone and Ornithopter of Paradise. These can importantly generate us multiple colours of mana, and honestly these are probably the best bits of fixing and ramp in the deck. For some more mana rocks, I would personally recommend the Talismans that importantly in this deck can tap for black mana. Remember as we said at the start of the video, this is a mono black deck splashing our other colours, so these talismans are great at ramping us ahead and then fixing for our other splash colours. Next up we have some more expensive options that can let our lands tap for any colour of mana. Chromatic Lantern is nice and cheap on the wallet, and personally I don't leave home without it in any 5 colour deck. Chromatic Orrery is more expensive both to cast and on the wallet, but it doing a similar thing while also generating us a bunch of mana and being a card draw engine is also very nice if you have access to it. We then have some colourless land tutors with the always great Wayfarer's Bauble and Sad Robot. They're just fantastic ways of ramping and fixing us no matter what lands we've drawn before them. To then go with the fact that we have a bunch of evasive creatures that want to be attacking every turn, we have Sword of the Animist. A nice little buff that ramp and growths us every time we attack, which is something we should easily be doing every turn. 
Another card that I really like in this deck is Discreet Retreat. This assassin based hideout is great at making any land generate extra mana of any colour, but then also it's a nice bit of card draw whenever we cast an assassin spell. And then for a final bit of fixing we have Prophetic Prism. It comes in, it draws us a card, and then it takes a mana and filters it into whatever colour that we need. Importantly it also costs pennies, so I would definitely consider sleeving it up. Next up is our card draw section, and we're looking for around 8-10 to 10 bits of card draw or card advantage to help keep the deck ticking over. First up we have some very solid assassins, in Basim, Ibn Hisak, Mary the Killing Quill, and Masker Girl, Known Killer. These are fantastic, they're an assassin that have some form of card draw or card advantage tacked onto them, that is perfect to cheat into play with free running with our commander. We then have some bonus form of card advantage next, with Ravenloft Adventurer being a great assassin that brings the initiative into the game. And then we have Queen Marchesa and Thorn of the Black Rose that bring the monarchy into the game as well. These are all fantastic with those unblockable effects that we went through at the start, as it basically means we'll always be able to take back the initiative or take back the monarchy if we ever lose them. Then in any kind of creature types matters deck, you have to consider Vanquisher's Banner. It buffs up the team while also drawing us a card whenever we cast an assassin. And then in Magic there's plenty of blue card draw spells out there, but one I think is really good and thematic in the deck is Eagle Vision. This most of the time will just be 2 mana to draw 3 cards, that's always solid, we love it. We then have some coastal piracy type of effects, cards like Ezio Blade of Vengeance, Bind of Thassa and Reconnaissance Mission all draw us a card whenever one of our assassins deal combat damage to a player, which if things are going anywhere near according to plan should hopefully be a lot of card draw. Next up is our interaction section, and like with most decks we want to start with around 8 bits and then go up from there the more competitive that our playgroup is. So it turns out assassins are pretty good at killing things, and there is a bunch of really cool options on assassins that you can look at running. For targeted removal you have cards like Kiku Knight's Flower, Scarblade Elite, Royal Assassin and Calidus Assassin. We then even get a board wipe with the OG Masker Girl. Run them all, they are all fantastic. We then have some creature type matters board wipes, we can bounce our opponent's creatures with raise the palisade, or just straight destroy everything that's not an assassin with kindred dominance. And then because obviously we're based in black, we have a bunch of the best and most efficient bits of removal and board wipes for you to choose from to top up the section as you need. Next up is a little bit of protection. Our commander lets us cheat on mana and cheat an army of deadly assassins into play, so to help Ezio last we'll need some ways of helping it stick around. First up we have Brotherhood Regalia and Winged Boots. These are both very solid bits of equipment that make it harder for our commander to be removed, while also giving it and some of our other assassins some bonus evasion. We then have the ever trusty Haystack. From a flavour point of view we really just have to run it, but then when it's in play letting a creature we control phase out and dodging a removal spell or dodging a board wipe is going to be really nice. We then have some old classics in Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, great at dodging targeted removal and the added haste will be really nice as well. We're then back to the Animus next with a really cool card in Smoke Bomb. This is basically 3 mana to have your whole board dodge removal for a turn, and then when we next untap lets a key creature get through for combat damage so we know the next turn we can free run some more assassins in with our commander out. Moving on next to some recursion, this will help us bring back some key assassins if they ever get removed. We have some typal matters cards with both back in town and Patriarch's bidding being able to bring back an awesome amount of assassins back into play in one fell swoop. We then have Jacob Fryer. This makes it so that if we dealt combat damage with an assassin on a turn, which as we've gone over should be pretty easy, we can exile an assassin from our graveyard and then cast a copy of it that turn. In this deck this is just basically repeatable recursion which is always pretty good. Ok we have the base of the deck, let's go over some dedicated ways for us to win the game. So firstly let's go back to Ezio for a sec. Its bottom ability lets us pay Wooburg when Ezio deals combat damage to a player, and then if that player has less than 10 life they lose the game. To help exploit that a little bit we have cards like Sorin Markov and Tree of Perdition. These can both lower a player's life total really really low, so that then one hit with Ezio and a bit of 5 colour mana is all we need to take a player out of the game. Keeping the assassin based all win conditions flowing next with Veraska the Unseen. It has some nice utility with its plus 1 and minus 3, but then its ultimate creates us 3 assassins that if they connect take a player out of the game. Another alternate win con is Ramsey's Assassin Lord. This makes it so that we only have to take out one player, and with it in play we just win the whole game, that is honestly fantastic. For the rest of the win cons we have a whole selection of very cool, very awesome assassins. There's a bunch of really good ones in this set and all throughout Magic, so run the ones that you like the most and suit your budget best. Then lastly you have cards like Shared Animosity and Coat of Arms. These are just fantastic in any deck with a bunch of creatures that share a type. These will make our assassins huge when we swing through with them, and if we have any kind of board state we're pretty much guaranteed to win the game. Ok last up we need to talk about our mana base, and like with most decks we're looking for between 36 and 40 lands here. We've already mentioned some utility lands earlier in the video, so combine those with what we're about to go over. 
So first up, we have some five color lands, with cards like Brotherhood Headquarters, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Path of Ancestry, and Unclaimed Territory. As most of our non-black spells are assassins, these will easily help us fix and let us cast them. But when we have Ezio out, cards like Urborg, Tomb of Yorgamoth, and Cabal Coffers will generate us a terrific amount of black mana that we can put into casting those free-running assassins. And then to help activate Exio's Wooburg ability, we have a card like Cascading Cataracts. Perfect for generating that lovely Wooburg mana that we need. And then the rest of the deck will be made up of the best lands that you have available to you. With this build, the mana pips of the deck shouldn't actually be that intensive, and like the talismans we mentioned earlier, you should be okay to run cards that tap for both a black and then another colour of mana. So if you have all the Triumphs, for example, don't run the ones that don't generate black. Same for Shock Lands, same for Check Lands. A special shout out, however, to the Tainted Cycle of Lands. These are lands that tap for two colours of mana if you control a swamp. They are fantastically super budget and I think will do a really good job in the deck. Right, that's going to do it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. The more people who are subscribed, the cooler things we can do. Let me know down in the comments if you're thinking of building this yourself. If there's any cards that you're thinking of adding that I've missed. Always helps me out. But until next time, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.